Welcome to Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for this Friday, April 13th, 2012. Our top story comes from the world of energy technology. A team at the J. Craig Venter Institute is developing a microbial fuel cell that can both clean sewage and produce electricity. Current sewage treatment involves many steps, such as separating solids, biological digesting, and killing dangerous microbes. This fuel cell already uses regular sewage and the microbes within it to produce electricity. Basically, microbes form films on electrodes inside a sealed container. As they break down biological molecules, electrons and protons are produced. A second chamber, which is unsealed, contains different microbes that produce water from the electrons, protons, and oxygen. Currently, this system can handle 100 gallons a week and remove 97% of biological material, which isn't perfect, but is getting there. But this is merely a prototype, and the hope is to decrease the running cost from $150 per gallon to under 20. Boosting the energy production to around 25% could potentially make sewage treatment energy neutral if implemented on a large scale. And hopefully devices like this can also help developing countries get clean water and electricity. Next, from the world of material science, a partnership between Queensland University of Technology and the United States Air Force is going into researching a new type of glass. This glass contains certain heavy metals that cause internal stress during cooling, which leads to crystallization, essentially ruining the glass. The only way to avoid this is to make the glass in microgravity. Now, two years was spent trying to make this material in normal gravity, but with gas levitation. It didn't work, so now the researchers must resort to microgravity production. Initial tests will be done at QUT. The material will experience about 2.1 seconds of microgravity from the fall. Then it's onto NASA's parabolic flight plane before the fiber pulling apparatus gets launched into space. Some of you are probably wondering, why go through all this trouble for these glass fibers? Well, this type of glass has the lowest theoretical attenuation loss of any other glass. If these fibers can be produced economically, it would mean less energy-consuming amplifier involved with communication technology. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider subscribing and be sure to check the links in the video description.